Welcome to episode 52 of Pateo Television. My name is Johan Oldenkamp, and in this episode I will talk about Bible translations. And I will do that based on the 39th chapter of the book of Job, the last four verses of this chapter. In the King James Version, we read, Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom and stretch her wings towards the south? In the Jewish Publication Society version, we read, Does the hawk soar by thy wisdom and stretch her wings towards the south? So it's a little bit different, the beginning. In the King James Version, the hawk is flying, but in the uh, G GPS version, the hawk is soaring. Yeah, but it's more or less the same. International, New International Version says, does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings towards the south? So more or less, they all agree on the first verse. But now comes the second one. King James Version says, does the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? GPS says, does the vulture mount up at thy command and make her nest on high. So what is the right translation? Is it about an eagle or about a vulture? Those are two completely different birds of prey. Let us see what New International Version says. Again, the eagle. Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? Yeah, but now we see the soaring at the second first and not in the first verse here as in the GPS version. So it seems that words have been twisted. 28, she dwelleth and abideth on the rock upon the crack of the rock and the strong place. Or she dwelleth and abideth on the rock upon the crack of the rock and the stronghold. Yeah, it's more or less the same. Or it dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crack is its stronghold. Move on to the next one. From thence she seeketh the prey and her eyes behold afar off. From thence she spieth out the prey, her eyes behold it far, afar off. Or from there it looks for food, its eyes detect it from afar. And the last verse here, her young ones also suck up a blood, and where the slain are, there she is. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there she is. Yeah, exactly the same. Its young ones feast on blood, and where the slain are, there it is. But which bird of prey is there where the slain are? Is it the eagle or is it the vulture? Clearly, you know the answer. So something is really weird here. Why is the eagle mentioned in the King James Version, in the New International Version? This all has to do with that in the original version, there were not two birds of prey, but three types and that is very essential it is yeah imperative to understand the original text so any version that you have or you can buy in the store yeah the printed bibles all around the world they are all wrong yeah at least almost all of them maybe there are some few exceptions but i've not encountered any of them so i I can say that the versions that you have in your house is most certainly wrong. And what point is there to study wrong translations of the word of God? There is no point. So we must go back to the source. We must understand the original text because you cannot make any sense out of what is translated here. It is completely not understandable. For instance, all the question marks here. 
in the original text, there are no question marks. So it's all interpretation. And in this text, there are no questions. It's all, these are all statements, period. And that is why I came up with a new Bible translation and I name it Pateo's Restored Bible. And let me read out the correct translation of these five uh, last verses of the book of Job, chapter 39. And from out of your higher knowledge, the hawk stands high with, with fixed wings, discerning towards the south. Indeed, when we look up, the hawk is standing still yeah, with fixed wings, not moving up in the sky, in heaven. 27, and upon your command, the eagle rises up, period. That's all it says about the eagle. The eagle is rising. Next, yeah, the remaining of this chapter is all about the vulture. But the vulture sits lodged upon his nest, upon a prominence of rock and hidden. There he seeks food. His eyes observe from afar, and his young befoul themselves in blood. And wherever one's dying may be, immediately they are located. So they come where there, are, where there is uh, uh, yeah, somebody dying, yeah, or an animal dying, or a carcasses. That is what vultures do. That is not what eagles do. So now we see. This is fully understandable. No question mark whatsoever here. These are all statements. Statements about three birds, three types of birds of prey. And do you think it is a coincidence that both the Roman, uh, the Roman Empire, the uh, Nazi Germany, and nowadays the USA, all chose the eagle as a kind of logo? Could this, have, could this have been a vulture? Maybe it would have been <laughs> more, more correct in my opinion, but they chose the eagle and not without reason. Because these three types of birds of prey are totally different from each other. Their behavior is different. And that is what the initiates were pointing to. We must understand this as a metaphor for ourselves, because I fully understand what this text is all about. But I will not share that with you in this video, because I cannot throw cast pearl before swine. For five years now, I am studying the original text, and I present the interpretation in Holy Scripture television. For 123 episodes long, it was television, TV, but now I changed to text version, also TV, because I think it is even more clear when I write it down instead of presenting. Yeah, now I'm presenting, this is a video presentation, and that is how I've done it for long, but I think it is even more clear if I write it down, the interpretation. This is how I work. I start with the most original text. If you have a text that is not original and you think that that is the word of God, then you already go in the wrong direction. It's pointless to study those words yeah, because you can, can go in, uh, yeah, you can give any interpretation you want, but it doesn't mean it's correct. Second, I translate it into a language that I can understand better. Yeah, for instance, the English language. And I do not interpret any of these original words. I simply give the literal translation. Next, I check this translation word by word to see if it is meaningful, if it is understandable. Next, I translate it into a third language. In my case, this is the Dutch language. And when I do so, I can see sometimes that there is a strange translation, meaning that the original word was not clear enough. Original English word, I mean that. So then I go back to the English text and touch it up. 
I change it in a, in a better word so that it is 100% clear what the text itself means. And then I move on to the interpretation. I give an explanation of the esoteric meaning of each verse. Originally, I did that in a video presentation yeah, for five years. Now I'm doing that in a written version, in a text version. And I share this with anyone who is like me building their own house on rock, because that's the only way to do it. Those who build their house on sand have no business knowing this. That would be pointers for them because they would not make, would not be able to understand a word of it. And that is also the problem with the Old Testament. The Old Testament has a lot of very essential information. But the problem was, and that was noted around the beginning of our current era, that the Jewish believers did not get it. They were taking these stories literally. And when you do this, then you completely miss the point. So what they did, the authors of the New Testament, they wrote down the same stories, or more or less the same stories, but in a completely different way, hoping that this time the readers would not take it literally. But guess what happened? For over 2,000 or almost 2,000 years now, Christian believers did not get it either. That is the problem of our current age. Christian believers also take the stories literally and therefore completely miss the point. And that is why I feel myself forced to come up with a third testament, which I name the extra testament. Yeah, it's not to replace any of the other two, yeah, because the Old and the New Testament are essential and we cannot change a single word from it. But it might be helpful to have an extra testament in which both the Old and the New Testament are completely explained, first by first. And that is what now becomes available. I'm working on this, but if you want to help me in any way, please contact me. The Extra Testament is only available for non-swine. Swine have no business whatsoever to see this. And of course, then we mean lazy swine. So how does the Extra Testament look like? Well, it's like this. Now, this is a part from the Gospel or the Evangelii according to Luke. On the left-hand side, you see the beginning of chapter 12, the Patea of Restored Bible, yeah, so the correct translations. And what is now made gray here on the right-hand side, that is showing the interpretation first by first. And that is the extra testament. And if you're interested in this, then contact me. You can contact me through social media, or you can go to my website, pateo.nl. I thank you for watching this, and I say to you, I bow for the divinity in you.